Welcome back to Hot Rod Guy Garage. And we're still working on this hack job of 65 Mustang. So stick with me through the intro and I'll be back. And all right guys, we left off the last video with removing the lower cowl. So the cowl still hasn't arrived. So I need to move forward. And what it means to move forward is I need to start getting the core support out of it. Now this is going to be a little different how I'm going to do this core support in this video than how you would normally do it. I will show you everything you need to do to do it the other way. But let me flip around and we'll go over a few things. So here is our old core support and I've got the radiator out of it and all the hacked up junk. And these uh, parts store red and black horns. The radiator, you know, hood latch, all that good stuff. If you're going to do a core sport in these cars, you're going to have to disassemble the whole front end of the car to do so. And once again, it would be easier without the motor in it. So your core sport is offered two ways, with cross member and without this cross member. Considering this car is so structurally compromised at this point from the cowl being removed, I cannot remove these jack stands. Doing so would be a very poor decision. Uh, so, to remove this core support, I got the one without the cross member. Obviously, it's a lot cheaper. And what you see is the back side of this cross member brace. So, the back side of this brace is right here. So, as you can see, it ties into your strut rod mounts and ties that cross member all together in here. So it's spot welded on the inside of that cross member, it's spot welded all the way across. They're spot welded all the way across through here, all the way through here. And then you got one about every half inch all the way up until you get to your fender apron on this side. Um, Obviously, we don't have one over here because they halfway put it in. So what I'm going to do, the first order business is drilling all these spot welds out and get them separated from that apron. But here's where I'm going to differ from doing it as, let's just say, replace the cross member. I am going to take this core sport and I'm going to cut it across through here. Uh, you will not see the seam once all the stuff's back on the car, and it saves me from having to disturb this cross member, these jack stands, and up a cowl. So it's easier for me to seam this. You know, actually, this side of the course board ain't that bad, other than some of these nut inserts were pulled out, and it's kind of just jacked up over here. But that side over here is all bent the heck, and up here at the hood latch up here it's all bent up too so this is pretty much going to be a patch panel for the core support instead of replacing the whole thing because i do not want to disturb this cross member it's good and solid i've tapped around on it and in doing so i don't have to disturb any of the structure of the car because this thing ain't doing anything anyway at this point so this video may be a little shorter than the other ones because I'm probably going to just cut this one out in this video and then we may start straightening these aprons up a little bit. And I really need to pull this motor out to get all this globbed on red paint out from under here, which is horrendous. Um, really, there's not much at this point to pull the motor out other than the shifter, the dry shaft, the exhaust and two motor mount bolts, and then this thing will just go bloop right out. But will allow me to get in here and fix things like this hacked in hole in this frame rail. It'll make it easier for me to put this apron in it and remove all the paint. Because I'm going through all this work, guys, and I'm not going to leave this stuff. You know, I'm not gonna cover it up and hide it with some paint. It's a, uh, you know, it's pretty poor under here. 
Only good thing is the motor ran great. It looks like he could use a freshen up paint job too. I'll leave that one up to him, but you know, I gotta fix all this stuff where we can start going forward. And as you can see, there's quite a few spot welds that hold that on. Now, if you're removing this on the other side, it would be about the same as this side. So, right now I need to break out my chisel. See if we can't get this separated from this apron. Then I'll make me an initial cut higher than what I want to cut it across. Just so I can get this out of the way. And we'll go from there. And all right, I got a core sport loose from the apron with minimal damage. Now we're left with Mr. Floppy here. So grab my saws on. I'm just gonna make me a buzz cut up high across on each side. Just get this out of the way for now. And I'm gonna have a look see on the back side. See if I can't seam it a little further down from that flange, just to make it look a little better. And if so, I'll be able to spot weld it like that. You'll never be able to tell it's been changed. I made my cut, but see how it is. This too is structural. So guys, what I've done, I've literally come in here and cut it about a half inch, three quarter of an inch or so above the spot weld flange. Now a lot of you may be thinking, why not just go ahead and put a cross member in it? Well, the cross member in this is actually good and solid. I can see the inside of it in here. It don't have no rust. Surprisingly decent shape. The uh, big thing is, I've got to come in here and I've got to fix this mess. Now, I don't want to have to put frame rails in this car in the front, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fix these nut inserts where they're all jacked up, and then I will simply patch this hole in the frame. I think it is the best option at this point since the car front structure as far as the frame rails go, the subframe rails, all the cross members and stuff don't seem to have ever been disturbed. So I think it's the best option uh, to do it that way. So that means I'm going to have to patch the core support in. So. As you can see, that flange right there is the one that's going to cause the issue. Otherwise, I just drill out spot welds along the bottom here and along the top and along this flange, and then I can take the whole back piece out. Um, I could also do it and just knock it off a chisel and not worry about those spot welds, you know, on them flanges. But since it is structural, even though it don't seem like it because this stuff's just thin floppy sheet metal, it ties everything together. Once everything's assembled, it's all tied together as one unit. That's why they call this a unibody or a unit body construction. Uh, all this stuff holds hands to make the car strong in the end. And strong. You know what I mean? But you try not to disturb more than you have to in these cases. And Really, the only reason I'm changing the core support, other than it being bent up a little bit, is it's rubbed off on that corner. Now, I could easily just patch that and just put a panel in or put half the core support in. I could have done that. But I think at this option of just replacing the whole thing and patching it down here at the bottom will give the nicest result in the end. And that's what it 
it's all about. It's trying to make the best results you can while I'm trying to save him some labor time too. Don't matter if you can't see it, right? And I'm not talking about botching stuff up because you can't see it. I'm talking about just patching something instead of putting the whole panel in. So I think it's the best option. And I think me fixing the front frame rails up here is also the best option in his own interest. Because other than that, you put the whole set frame on that side. On the shock tower, you know. I'm sure they sell a patch for the front half, but you know, then you got another scene that's possibly structurally compromised, even though, you know, you may think you got it good. So all about the best results in the end, and that's where I'm at. So at this point, I need to come here and clean my apron flange on the driver's side over here where I cut spot welds off of it. So that's pretty much gonna be like what I done on the cowl. I'm going go in here with a hammer and dolly, heat it with my flap disc, clean it up, spray a little weld through primer on it for now while I decide how I'm proceeding forward. Now, like I said before, the motor will be super easy to come out at this point, and that may be what I do. But to put the motor back in with core support in, I'm going to have to take stuff like the fan and the alternator brackets and, you know, some of that stuff off to get it back in, which isn't, once again, not a big deal. Just adds a little labor time. So let me get started and we'll see where we get. So I got my flange cleaned up and I'm going to flip it around. More surprises. So, like I said, I come in here with my hammer and dolly, straighten that flange out. Docked off my flap disc. Come in here, chipped all the flaky undercoating off that I could. And as I was hammering Dolly in, trying to straighten these up the best I could. And, you know, making sure this ain't been patched in. Yep. That little weird blob right there was a rust hole. And the only way to properly fix this would be to cut this out right here separate this piece right here clean this flange weld a patch in here and fix it but that's not the only rust i found right here guys i found this and this is exactly what it looked like under the paint uh, in a weird little lumpy area when i was scraping that undercoating off it opened up a spot over here uh, it looks like they sprayed this with undercoating because it clogged my flap disc up when I was trying to kind of grind this off to see what we had and, and I found more of it up here in this so lots of nastiness and I'm sure that you can see the quality of this paint now that it's zoomed in good we're in a kind of a tight area, but don't look like there's nothing hidden behind this stuff from what I can tell. So hopefully these are the only rust surprises we find and that up there. But the frame looks good up here. I can see the spot welds. I don't see any lumpy stuff, you know, yeah. Like I said, this car is hacked up from one end to the other. There is not one bolt, not one piece of panel, nothing on this car they've been hacked up. <sighs> so I went in here with my OSFO and treated this stuff. And I peeled this seam up so I get it up under here while I decide what I'm doing there. I've done some more hammer and dolly work on this apron. I've got it pretty straight, except for where I got peeled up right there. Looks a lot better. Uh, same way over here. I'm pretty sure this car's probably been hit up high over here because we had a pretty good little crease under the paint right here. And this was kind of bulged up. I've worked it down, worked the bolt holes back flat. And as you can see, I've got the spring covers slash reinforcement played off. And I've got the same thing going on over here. 
I hit some of these raw places with some osfo under here where I scraped undercoating off. And that's probably where I'm gonna leave it for today. Now, I'm probably gonna come back over here tomorrow, mostly because the forecast is it's gonna rain. I usually don't work on Saturday, but I'm gonna come back in here and we're gonna remove these two pieces and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. And hopefully we might get some motor janked out of here too. Well, it's another day. Didn't get what I wanted to get done, done. But as you can see, I come in here with some weld-through primer and hit some in place that I hit with Osfo. So this morning, I've been in here working on getting motor out of it. I'm down to some motor mount bolts and bell housing bolts. I got the starter off, which was loose. And the exhaust manifold bolts for the pipes, which were loose. So probably a good thing I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. Because everything's loose. Uh, yep, it don't ever fail. She's all charged up from her short this morning and she's gonna turn her back on me. But like I said, got some well-through primer sprayed where I needed to, where I treated with some of that Osfo last night. Come in here this morning, I got most of this wiring cut down and loose so I can sort through it. And also we're gonna go in here and do the rest of the bottom of the dash. You wanna say something? Huh? No, okay. But coming along, does have a nice shiny new holly carburetor on it. That's about the only positive thing so far. It's probably the loose too. But we can get the motor mount bolts off of it and bell housing bolts out of it, and we should be able to beep the motor itself out. I'm gonna leave transmission in it. I just didn't feel like dealing with dry shaft and shifter. But this thing's definitely gonna have to have a nut and bolt check over every part of the car once it's back together. All right, and guess what guys? I went down here to try to get motor mount bolts loose. And this one right here was already kind of shiny up under here which stinks all in its own and it's stripped out so my deep well extractors i don't have one big enough so i'm gonna try to hammer a metric socket on this thing and hopefully it'll come out Other fun things that I showed in the first video of this car the oil pan is sitting on the cross member over here and I don't know if anybody remembers back to the very first video on this car but this thing's welded in on one side so the things I've got to fix on this car that's one of them but big thing is I gotta get this out well I finally found my extractor and guess what it still won't come out so Big thanks to the moron that put this on there. Try splitting it there and seeing if we can't get it off. Not. Sure, that'll come off. No, it's gonna come off one way or another. Well, this is what victory looks like. Yeah. Good job, previous idiot. I'm pretty 
sure it's cross threaded. Stripped out, it's a mess. Uh, I sure didn't help the situation. Trying to take it out, but it was already screwed up to begin with. Hopefully, I don't run into any more of that getting this motor out of this car. I'm pretty much sick of this kind of stuff. And yeah. Hard fight trying to fight the good fight here. Boy, it's a mess. And the motor's out of it. Kind of at this point, I regret not pulling transmission too because it was stuck on the dowel pins. As you see, there's no dowel pins in the block because they're stuck in the bell housing. It was all like stuck together, it fought coming out, and you know, all that fun stuff. But the motor is pretty clean. I mean, I've seen better and I've seen worse. But it is a C5 date code block, according to the numbers on it. And what I would guess would probably be the original motor in the car. Somebody's put a clutch in it, not too old, because it's not dusty. But when you spin throw up bearing in there, it don't sound too good. And get some more bolts that looks like they may not be tight for the bell housing in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that thing out the bottom because I've got to grind this weld down over here and get rid of all this globby horrible paint. Which you know, as usual with the rest of the car, it's just flaking off. So now that that's out, we can see exactly what we got in here. Surprises, surprises, surprises. So I got the apron cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the driver's or passenger side apron back in the car before I start messing with core sport stuff. But yeah. So got all our flanges cleaned up, weld through primer on both sides. Flanges cleaned up, weld through primer. So the next thing I need to do is I need to fit this up. I need to mark where I'm going to drill my spot weld holes. I'm going to try to mimic the ones on this side just for consistency. But I'm pretty sure that this thing's brush painted under the hood because they sure didn't have the motor out of it when they painted this mess. And yes, I know that weld's ugly. If you knew what I had to deal with, you'd understand. But there's like runs and globs and stuff everywhere. So I'm going to be glad to get rid of all this. And pulling the motor out of it was the only way to do it. I wind up pulling this transmission out the bottom. Should have pulled it with the motor. Like I said before, hindsight is a 2020. This made it easier. We learned anything from this, everything's got to be done the hard way. And when we do it the hard way, we find surprises. And all right, I got all my spot welds in there. I got a couple of self tappers in a couple of places. Stuck my bolt in here, line this up. Measured our lengths, our fender bolt holes and measured our heights at the front. So should be read well that apron back in the car. At least get some structure back in it, even though it's not really going to do nothing at this point. But I want to go ahead and get that in there before I start messing with the core sports stuff. Uh, it's just a mess. So ready to start welding now. So let's get that in there.
And all right, I got that all ground down. I sprayed a little well through primer to just keep from rusting here in the shop. I cleaned and straightened my flange up up here where they had murdered it. And as you can see, it's still murdered up here at the top compared to this side. So that's something I'll probably have to go in there and fix. But the way I'm gonna do this course board, I'm gonna come in here where this flap's at. I'm gonna cut straight across right here and then up right here on this side. I'm gonna drill out my spot welds that hold this flange on and we'll remove it on both sides. And then I'll take our new course port over here. Then where this drop down is at right here. I'll cut straight across and then up. But that's how I'm gonna do that. But before I do that, and while this is open and I can just walk right in here and do things, I'm going to get all this red paint off this car. So what does that mean? It means that I'm going to have to make this into a, yet another video. Like I said before, I can only film so long on a video before I have to upload it because my phone only has so much storage. So what I'm going to do I'm gonna get some paint stripper. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna strip all this red paint off this under the hood. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna get this transmission out of here. Get all this degreased first. I'm gonna get all this red paint off under the hood. We're gonna get some kind of etching primer sprayed on it, and then we'll come back to the core support install. Hopefully, my cow will show up. It was supposed to be delivered yesterday. It got rescheduled for next week. So I'm kind of in a pause on that. So basically, this is where we're at today, unfortunately. Um, feel good that I got the apron in it, got the motor out of it, even though it fought a little bit. Daisy's happy I'm done making a bunch of noise, so she's gonna lay back up there and go back to sleep. But pretty good progress, still a lot more to go. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. As usual, hit that like button, comment down below, share it with your friends. If you're not a subscriber watching this stuff, hit that subscribe button because it does help the channel grow and lets me knock some labor off his bill. Uh, if you are a subscriber, I greatly appreciate you guys. Until next video, guys, I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.